Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do practice problems that relate to our homeostasis chapter. Let's go ahead and get started. The first problem says, which of the following would most likely be filtered through the glomerulus into Bowman's space? A says erythrocytes, B says monosaccharides, C says platelets, and D says proteins. Now, the glomerulus functions like a sieve, so small molecules dissolved in the fluid will pass through it. All right, this includes glucose, which is later reabsorbed. Large molecules such as proteins and cells, such as erythrocytes and platelets, they will not be able to pass through. And so the only thing that would be able to pass through is things like glucose, which is a monosaccharide. And so the correct answer for one here is going to be B. Two says, in which of the following segments of the nephron is sodium not actively transported out of the nephron? A says proximal convoluted tubule. B says thin portion of the ascending limb, limb of the loop of Henle. C says distal convoluted tubule. And D says the thick portion of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. All right, so sodium is actively transported out of the nephron in the proximal and distal convoluted tubules where the concentration of sodium outside of the nephron is higher than inside. And so the energy is, thus the energy is required to transport the sodium molecules against their concentration gradient. That means answer choice A and C are not it. All right, because we're trying to find which segment of the nephron is sodium not actively transported out of the nephron. These are actively transported out of the nephron, so that's not what we're looking for. Cool. In the inner medulla, however, sodium and other ions diffuse passively down their concentration gra gradients from the thin ascending limb of the loop of Henle. All right. The thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle is thick because its cell contains many mitochondria, which produce the ATP that's needed for active transport of sodium and chloride out of the filtrate. So considering that, all right, answer choice D is also a segment of the nephron where sodium is actively transported. The only segment of the nephron is sodium not actively transported out of the out of the nephron is going to be answer choice b the thin portion of the ascending limb of the loop of henley all right and like we said all right in the inner medulla sodium and other ions diffuse passively down, down their concentration gradient all right so they're not actively transported two is b three says which region of the kidney has the lowest solute concentration under normal physiological circumstances all right well, A says cortex, B says outer medulla, C says inner medulla, and D says uh, renal pelvis. Okay, so the region of the kidney that has the lowest solute concentration is the cortex, where the proximal convoluted tubule and a part of the distal convoluted tubule are found. The solute concentration is going to increase as one descends into the medulla and concentrated urine can be found in the renal pelvis. And so the region with the lowest solute concentration is going to be the cortex. So the correct answer for three here is A. Four says, which of the following sequences correctly so shows the passage of blood through the vessels of the kidney? All right, so blood enters the kidney through the renal artery, which divides into many afferent arteries that run through the medulla and into the cortex. Each afferent arteriole branches into a convoluted network of capillaries called the glomerulus. Rather than converging directly into a vein, the capillaries converge into an efferent arteriole, which divides into a fine capillary network known as the vasa recta. The vasa recta capillaries enmesh the nephron tubule, where they reabsorb various ions and then converge into the renal vein. This arrangement of tandem capillary beds is known as a portal system. The answer that describes exactly what we talked in steps is going to be answer choice A, renal artery, afferent arteriolis, glomerulus, efferent arteriolis, vasa recta, vasa recta, and then the renal vein. So four is A. 
Five says, which of the following statements is false? A says, antidiuretic hormone increases water reabsorption in the kidney. B says, aldosterone indirectly increases water absorption in the kidney. C says, antidiuretic uh, hormone acts directly on the proximal convoluted tubule. And D says, aldosterone stimulates reabsorption of sodium from the collecting duct. So all of the answer choices describe antidiuretic or aldosterone functions. All right, but these two hormones, they ultimately act to increase water reabsorption in the kidney and their respective mechanism of action, however, is what's different. So antidiuretic hormone increases water reabsorption by increasing the permeability of the collecting duct to water, whereas aldosterone stimulates reabsorption of sodium from the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. All right, so using this knowledge, we can now attack the answer choices. The, the answer choice C, all right, uh, antidiuretic hormone acts directly on the proximal convoluted tubule, all right, this is an incorrect statement. The antidiuretic hormone does not act on the proximal convoluted tubule, rather the collecting duct. And so which of the following statements is false? Answer choice C. Six says in the nephron, amino acids enter the vasa recta via the process of blank. So essential substances like glucose, salts, amino acids, water, they're reabsorbed from the filtrate and then returned to the blood in the vasa recta. In general, reabsorption refers to the movement of solutes from the filtrate back into the blood. All right, so the correct answer for six here is going to be D. Seven says, on a very cold day, a man waits for over an hour at the bus stop. Which of the following structures helps his body set and maintain a normal temperature? A says the hypothalamus, B says kidney, C says posterior pituitary, and D says brainstem. Well, the hypothalamus, it functions as a thermostat that regulates body temperature. So when it's cold outside, nervous stimulation to the blood vessels in the skin is increased and that causes the vessels to constrict. And this constriction diminishes blood flow to the skin surface, to the skin surface, and then it prevents heat loss. All right. Now, sweat glands are turned off to prevent heat loss through evaporation. Um, skeletal muscles are stimulated to shiver, which increases the metabolic rate, and that produces heat. All right. Now, the hypothalamus is also involved in other processes all right, that we've talked about in previous chapters, like endocrine hormones, regulation of appetite, circadian rhythm. And now we know from this chapter also as a thermostat that regulates blood temperature. So the correct answer for seven is going to be A. A says glucose reabsorption in the nephron occurs in the blank. The filtrate enters Bowman's capsule and then flows into the proximal convoluted tubule where virtually all glucose, amino acids, and other important organic molecules are reabsorbed through active transport. So the answer choice here is going to be C, the proximal convoluted tubule. Beautiful. Nine says, under normal physiological circumstances, the primary function of the nephron is to create urine that is blank. A says hypertonic to the blood, B says hypotonic to the blood, C says isotonic to the filtrate, and D says hypotonic to the vasa recta. Cool. So let's break it down. The kidneys function to eliminate wet waste, such as urea, while reabsorbing various important substances like glucose and amino acids for reuse by the body is the important is the main function of the kidney. Generation of a solute concentration gradient from the cortex to the uh, um, medulla, it allows a considerable amount of water to be reabsorbed. Now, excretion of concentrated urine serves to limit water losses from the body. This helps to preserve blood volume. And so the primary function of the nephron is to create urine that is hypertonic to the blood. And so that means the correct answer here is A. All right. Fantastic. 10 says diabetic 
Nephropathy is commonly detected by finding protein in the urine of a patient in such a disease, what is likely defect in the nephron. So the glomerulus is the most likely location of pathology if larger proteins are detected in the urine. This is because large proteins should not be able to pass through the filter of the glomerulus in the first place. Once large proteins are in the filtrate, no other nephron structure can reabsorb them, and so the only likely source of protein in the urine is through glomerulus pathology. So the answer to 10 is A. Fantastic. 11, C, 11 says, a laceration cuts down into a layer of loose connective tissue in the skin. Which layer of this? Which layer of the skin is this? The layer of skin that is predominantly loose connective tissue is the papillary layer of the dermis. All right papillary layer of the dermis. So the correct answer here is going to be C. 12 says, what is the pH of the, of the blood? Oh, when the pH of the blood is high, which substance is likely to be excreted in large quantities in the urine? A says urea, B says ammonia, C says hydrogen ions, D says bicarbonate ions. Well, when the pH of the blood is high, this indicates that the blood is al alkaline, right? Alkalemic. In order to correct the pH of the blood, the kidney is going to increase the excretion of a base, namely bicarbonate. Excretion of urea would have little effect on the pH, so it's not urea. Um, ammonia is a base, but it's quite toxic, and it's generally converted to re urea before excretion. So cancel that answer choice out. Now, excretion of hydrogen ions would result in making this case even worse. And so that doesn't make any sense as well. It's, it would make the blood pH even more alkalemic. The only correct answer that makes sense here is bicarbonate ion. So 12 is D. 13 says, in which layer of the skin can the stem cells of keratin sites be found? Cool. Um, if you remember from lecture, the stratum basal contains the stem cells that proliferate to form keratin sites, which then ascend through the other layers of skin until they are shed from the stratum corneum. So which layer of the skin can the stem cells of ker keratin sites be found? It's going to be C. All right, the stratum basal, because it contains the stem cells that proliferate to form keratin sites. Beautiful. 14 says a drug is used to prevent the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. What is a likely effect of this drug? All right. Normally, angiotensin II causes secretion of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Aldosterone serves to increase reabsorption of sodium while promoting excretion of potassium and hydrogen ions. So, blocking the release of aldosterone should result in decreased reabsorption of sodium, all right, while also decreasing excretion of potassium and hydrogen ions. All right, this makes Answer choice B, the correct answer. Increased potassium reabsorption. Fantastic. 15 says sarin is a potent organophosphate that can be used in chemical warfare. As an inhibitor of acetylcholine uh, esterase, sarin causes excessive buildup of acetylcholine in all synapses where it is the neurotransmitter, which of the following symptoms would be most likely to be seen in an individual with sarin poisoning? So an excess of acetylcholine is going to lead to an activation of all parasympathetic neurons, all right? Also pre-ganglionic uh, sympathetic neurons and the post-ganglionic sympathetic neurons that innervate sweat glands. Now, because the parasympathetic nervous system causes contraction of the bladder, one would expect increased urination, all right? And the increased activation of sweat glands would also lead to increase in sweating as well. And so the correct answer here is going to be A. It's going to result in increased urination, increased sweating. Fantastic. With that, we've completed the problem set. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day, future doctors.